Hey there, welcome back to SimTech channel. This is STM32 coding for everyone. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can set up your STM32 ADC to basically run in interrupt mode, right? In the previous tutorial, we've looked at the ADC continuous conversion mode, right? And we also saw the ADC polling method, which is basically based on the single conversion mode. Okay, now the ADC interrupt mode actually is an improvement of the ADC single conversion mode, which is separated from the continuous converter mode. Please watch the previous tutorial so you can get in line to what I am talking about. So if I open the ADC polling method uh, main function here, right? you're going to see we had a couple of function initialization here first there is an initialization of the adc that basically set up everything about our adc right and then we have to start the adc then we need to do the adc polling conversion and we need to do the adc get value now the key function here is the polling right and we have to start the adc every time okay and then we do the polling now the polling simply mean we are standing and waiting to get a value from the potentiometer and then do the conversion okay so now that method actually wastes time because you're standing there wasting some resources just watching whether there is something going on on your adc input now why am i saying that because bear in mind that this development board is very resourceful right there is a lot of memories there is a lot of flash and all sort of things it's expensive it's a development board now for your typical application for a consumer product or whatever you want to design you're not going to put the development board on it you're also not going to put these uh big stm32 chip inside you're going to look for a version of a stm32 that only have the minimum that you need for your project that's going to be cheaper now the problem with that is that it's not going to have the capability of this chip. So which means you're going to have limited flash memory and so all sort of things. This is why while coding, you have to use the method that is the most effective to you. So this is where the interrupt polling, the interrupt method comes in. Instead of polling all of the time, you can instead use the ADC interrupt. Basically, it would only interrupt your main code okay to basically do an adc conversion when it detects the change on your adc input that's basically what it is so to do that i've done uh, basically i've copied the previous uh, project the continuous conversion and made a copy and renamed it so now we can go into the ioc interface here where we can actually see what we need to set up here so that we can get that ADC interrupt going. Great, now that we are here, before we can move forward, please remember to give this tutorial a thumbs up and subscribe to SimTech channel if you find this tutorial useful indeed. That will be highly appreciated and I thank you so very much for your support. Okay, now because this is a copy of the previous project, we actually going to have some pin configuration that are imported from the previous project now. Uh, I've already explained that I'm running an LCD display here, which explains the reason why I've got all sort of L, uh, pins out that are actually enabled. Okay, so what I'm going to do is there are certain pins that I'm actually not using, so I will just toggle them off. All right, so one of it is the button, the blue button on my nuclear board. I'm not using it, so I'm just going to reset it or turn it off. And the next one that I'm going to disable is pa5 which is actually the onboard led that i'm also not using at the moment i will reset it and i'm also going to reset the tx and rx pin because i'm also not using them so i'll just reset the state there and reset the state you can see as soon as i remove the uh, transmission then the receiver also was complaining because you cannot have the transmission enabled but the receiver is disabled that's just how the microcontroller operates here okay so now without wasting any further time let's look into what we need to set up here we already running on pa0 which is uh the channel one that we are using right there 
and the setting are as follow right so since we were running the previous uh, program or project on continuous conversion mode i'm going to go ahead and disable the continuous conversion okay so we're gonna disable it okay and when we come down here on the ranks okay now these ranks here i've already explained it the only thing that actually matter here since we're running only channel one the only other function or parameter that we can change here is a sampling time which i've left it 281 now we can go ahead and increase it or decrease it doesn't matter this will just increase our accuracy if you want to test that that's up to you you can choose any sample time right there okay we're going to stay on 10 bit mode or let's go to 12 bit mode and the clock settings we're going to leave it as is on the asynchronous clock mode basically the full clock speed of our adc bus which is basically running here on apb2 peripheral clock which is on 64 megahertz great now let's come back into the pin configuration so before we can import the code the one important parameter is to enable the adc interrupt global interrupt variable so that is adc1 and adc2 global interrupt variable must be enabled so that we can actually implement the interrupt mode so if you don't enable this you won't be able to call the interrupt function that will do your adc conversion so having said that let's go ahead and generate the code that's basically all we need here and we're going to generate our code great so the cube ide is basically done generating the much needed code basically for our configuration and initialization here we still have our old code uh, here. All we have to do is just basically to do some changes. Now, do not worry, uh, as I've said already, uh, all of this code here is just to handle my LCD display. So if you do not have an LCD display in this test, uh, you don't have to worry about all of this code here. You can basically just set up the ADC a start function and the get value the same way we're going to do it right now to basically enable the ADC with interrupt. Okay, so to do that, we have to start the ADC with interrupt. So I'm going to basically call that function, which uh, only with the underscore IT here, that will basically be our function, start ADC with interrupt. And we're going to pass the handle for the ADC that basically was already defined here for us. Okay, then... Uh, the next thing is this function here, the ADC get value. We're still going to need it, but we're not going to have him inside the while loop here. Now we have to move it inside the callback function that will be called when the ADC start with interrupt is complete the conversion. Then we need to call that function and that's where we're going to run this to get the value so to do that i'm going to open the drivers here and find the function uh on the adc h a l adc then we need to find the callback function great so there aren't uh, lots of function in this uh, source file here basically we can find the callback function just by scrolling in the name of the function is adc uh, callback complete right uh i think it is this one here adc conversion complete callback okay so that's the one with the underscore weak variable okay so i'm going to copy it and come back into my main function here for my adc interrupt okay then i'm just going to paste this here right after my main function uh, and then as always you have to remove the keyword weak there great then this basically make way for us to clean here okay let's just go ahead and clean it and then we need to pass the get value in here so i'm gonna cut it from here okay and we're going to basically paste it here okay so that's basically all we need guys um let's try and see if it's going to work because i believe there's still something that we need to put in here because uh the adc right start here 
only one time and as soon as we get into the while loop here okay we might not be able to basically run this again okay because remember this function is being called upon interrupt which have a priority uh, higher than the while loop so which means after we are in here we're not going back in this here so we need to call this again every time so i think we must copy it right after we've done the conversion the interrupt is called then we pass the value then we need to start another one because if we don't start and we just go into the while loop here we're never going to start the adc with interrupt again so basically it will just be a one time so we need to pass this adc start with interrupt inside that callback function then i think that would be basically it let me build this and just to make sure that we're not going to get any error right now so let's build that okay build is running well and it should complete now great so the build is completed without any error let me then go ahead and load this into our microcontroller which one we loading the interrupt conversion not the continuous great so we select that one and we need to load this now into our board and hopefully there won't be any problem into this conversion since we follow every setting necessary for this uh, particular test debugger is running okay then we just need to wait for this count up here okay there we go uh five then we need to enter okay there we go so we are in adc and okay let's see here yeah, looks like it's working right uh looks like it's working 1495 did we move to the 12 bit mode let me just see here yeah? because uh, we're getting 1495 that's signal that we are in a 12 bit mode okay yeah we went into a 12 bit mode just with a higher uh, circle right the number of circles for the sampling rate was increased to the highest value here let's just check quickly here in the parameter settings okay so we are on 601.5 circles so that basically increases the stability and accuracy so the value is not jumping up and down right on like on our previous tutorial so you can see that the adc is working very well now if you do not have an lcd obviously you can run it on the debug mode as here just click on debug and you should be able to run your program in debug mode so we're going to enter debug mode just now just a moment okay switch yes and then you have to ensure that the live expression is enabled okay we are on live expression and we should be able to get the value but only when you click on resume okay so when you resume automatically this reset right and we enter so you can see we got 795 there and we got about the same thing there and zero right then we can go all the way to 1495 so that basically it guys so that is how you can run your adc basically in interrupt mode to avoid the polling method that actually can waste your cpu time so thank you guys for watching if you've liked this tutorial and you find it useful please make sure you give it a thumbs up and subscribe to simtech channel that will be highly appreciated until next time cheers